Is Pharma Niaga on 40% discount? Time to hood. As a disclaimer, none of what we say should be taken as financial advice. This is purely educational. And as another disclaimer, we do not own any shares in Pharma Niaga. According to experts, in 2023, there's a 60 to 90% chance of recession. And I'm sure you want to avoid that. Now, over the past seven months, our Firo Pro model portfolio has grown by 18%, while the market has fallen by 3%. Now, if you're interested in learning how we did it, we've got a special free training just for you on the 23rd of March. So go ahead and sign up in the comment section or the description. All right, MJ, Pharma Niaga. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, past five days is down about 40%. Yep. Uh, caught everyone by surprise, actually. Yes. I, I mean, most of the retail investors didn't ex, uh, expect them to hit PN17 status. Yep. Uh, just that one news and cause uh, chaos in yes. the share price movement. Uh, okay, so uh, I believe this is the article that says that uh, they are going to announce a PN17. Also, it's because most of the uh, drugs that they hold, the Sinovac. Yes, correct. It's going to like, uh, it's going to expire. Like they cannot use it. Is that what it is? Uh, the exact status of the inventories, I'm not quite sure. But what essentially happened was what we call an inventory impairment. Whenever you have inventory, it actually adds to your balance sheet. Yes. Correct. And what is inventory? Inventory is just future potential profit. Now, here's how it affects the accounting. Okay, before I move on, roughly the amount that is impaired is 550 million. Now, I mean, you can look at that number. Is it big? Is it small? Uh, I will show you. It's Mm. actually pretty big. So what uh, essentially happened is this. So you can see as of 2021, they had inventories of about 1.2 billion ringgit. Mm. 1.264 1.264 to be precise. And that dropped to 767,000. Almost 50% cut. Yeah. So if you, I mean, you mental math is yeah. about 500 million, right? Which right. is in the ballpark of the 550 that, you know, this vaccine, mm. um, you know, provision. Yep. Um, oh, by the way, before I forget, uh, I think i uh, got to give credit for Aaron. Uh, Aaron, the guy we did a podcast, podcast. on, we can see here. Yeah. Um, he, were, he, he was helpful in some of the research that we are giving you today. So, yeah, so there's inventories. And then what ha- actually happens is this, right? On the accounting statement, it will actually affect your p l Yes. So again, because it's f- future potential uh, profit, so it, it, you know, it affects. And you can see, right, uh, 2021, they made about 85 million in profits, which is higher, which is roughly about, you know, 75% higher than their usual average profit. Mm. That was 85 million 2021. And then of course, there's this big massive drop of 644,000. Now, of course, a big chunk of them is from the impairment and then the remainder, I haven't really investigated yet, but yeah, it's it's big basically, right? Mm. So what ends up happening is it actually starts to affect your balance sheet, right? So on the right is 2021. Yeah. Q4 on the left uh, side. So this is the, the 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 right side here. Yep. This is 2021 and this is 2022. Mm. La. So uh, just a little bit of accounting lesson for those of you who are not familiar. The balance sheet is there to measure your net worth, right? It's there to measure how much assets you have, cash, debt, whatever. And uh, one of the very important line items in the balance sheet is the equity. Uh, mm. Sometimes they call it the shareholders equity. Yeah. And usually the share, shareholders equity is split up into two different, there's more, but the big ones is share capital and reserves. Yeah. Sometimes they call reserves Re- retained retain earnings. earnings. Okay. Yeah. So what is share capital is just the amount of money they've raised from um, themselves and or maybe themselves the public. And the public. Yeah. And then reserves is the amount of money they've made from the business that they are keeping it, that they are retaining it. That's what they call retain earnings. Right. So reserves. Lah. So you can see in 2021, uh, 154 million in share capital and reserves of uh, about 300 million. Mm. Now, but as a result of this decline, 
essentially their reserves were completely wiped out and went into a negative territory. Right. I mean, that is what happened. I mean, that is what triggered the PN17 uh, yes. because of the reserve. So the, one of the first rules, right, for a company to trigger the PN17 criteria is if on a consolidated basis, the uh, shareholders equity, so is this item here, the total equity here, right? Mm. Or shareholders equity is 25% or less than the share capital, which is 154. Mm. So you can see if it's negative, what? 250, uh, obviously yeah. if it satisfies the criteria. Yep. This is very similar to Air Asia when they had their PN17. Right. So, um, yeah, this is the big number one criteria. It's very obvious, right? Like, look, if, so PN17 doesn't mean the company will go bankrupt. I think this is something that a lot of people uh, need to understand. What PN17 is trying to do is to highlight to you that there's a big risk uh, that the company might be facing based on this criteria. Yeah, correct. That's it. Yeah, And I believe why they put a PN17 status over there is to tell people that potentially in order to save this company, uh, they may need to raise more funds from the public Correct. or somewhere else. Uh. Or somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, so the question yeah. is, looking forward, if you're an investor, if you're looking at this as a potential undervalued investment is, what can we expect going forward? Is this a huge problem for Pharma Niaga? Hey guys, if you're interested in building a six to seven figure portfolio using the power of stock investing, head over to the comment section or the description to sign up for our free masterclass so that we share with you exactly how we do it. Now to answer that question is relatively straightforward. It is somewhat of a math question. And this was the insight that Aaron shared with me. And that is, look, if you look at the profits before 2022, right. Right, um, roughly, I'll show you the math, is about 49 million, give or take. Yeah. Okay. So right now, in order to get out of the PN17 um, criteria, what do they have to do? They have to be, they have to have shareholders equity, mostly from the reserves, that is higher than 25% of the share capital. Mm, okay. Right? Yeah. So that means, if you look here, what it really means is that you have to add 20% to the share capital. No, so, to the shareholders, shareholders equity. equity. Yeah, so, right. which roughly is 39 million. Yep. Right? One quarter of 154 million is 39 million. Yep. So that means the company needs to go from uh, negative total equity, let's say, of negative 227 mm. all the way until 39 million. Mm. It has to grow that amount. So it's 227 plus 39. Now, of course, the more conservative of you will take 248, which is also true. Okay? That's a conservative version. Right. So roughly, you add them together, 227 plus, let's run it off to 40, is 267. Mm. And if you take the average earnings of the from 2012 to 2021, it's about 49 million. This implies... A 5.4 year mm. recovery. Oh, that's very long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um that is how long. But the beauty is that it's very possible because if you guys understand Pharma Niaga, it is almost like a monopoly. Yeah. Um the only other listed company in the space that have the same kind of dominance is potentially uh dual pharma. But Pharma Niaga is the, you know. The largest one. Uh, yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, Malaysia, so yeah. their cash flows are quite guaranteed. That's why this 49 million um, average is not actually that, uh, what you can say, that uncertain. Mm. So uh, a second thing is that they could recover some of the inventories. I'm not sure how they're going to do it. They could. And all they need to do is to recover half of their inventories. Now, if you want to really go deeper into this and into the inventory, what you have to do now is to assess, right? Okay, basically you ask yourself, look, Sinovac vaccines, right? What is the expiry for them? Right, I am not expert, I've not done the thing, but maybe some of you watching can do it. You know, if let's say vaccines can last and it doesn't expire for let's say three years. Okay. So all they have to do is to find a buyer that's willing to buy their Sinovac vaccine yeah. for half the price. And I think if you look in the world, it's, it's very, very possible. 
Now, this is important because if they can recover half the inventory, right, whether for half price or for half quantity and fixed price, whatever combination, basically they are already back. They will straight away boost past the PN17 criteria. Mm. So that's the second way. So obviously there's going, in reality, there's going to be a combination of operating earnings plus recovery of inventory to solve this because generally speaking, Malaysian accounting is quite conservative. So um, the accountants are going to just treat all that 550 as a gone case. Right. When, you know, I don't know for sure, but I would assume that not, all of this inventory were bought at the same time, some later, some earlier. Yeah. So obviously those that are later will have a longer expiry period, which means they have, you know, not longer expiry period, but they will have an expiry period that will end. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Or if let's say they want the shorter, the recovery period, they can raise money from the public. Is it? Uh, no, 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 no. The the recovery means that they take the inventories, they go yeah, out and sell, sell it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if let's say they want to like recover the equity, right? So yes, then they can yes. like take away the PN17 status, cancel off, they, they can- Yeah, so that's, is, the, right? that's, the yeah. Third, that's the third way. Mm. Um, or they get a nice cash injection from- The government. Uh, boosted. <laughs> or boosted. Uh, boosted mm. or, or LTAD. LTAD, you know, yeah. you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Right. Um, mm. So uh, yeah, so that's one way. And then of course they can raise funds uh, from shareholder, shareholders. So that's the third way, lah, yeah. right? And uh, yeah, so when you look at this, my assessment is that they've got a lot of ways to get back. And remember this is a monopoly and it's unlikely to, you know, allow. Now the, the, there's a larger question, which is, is this actually a good thing, right? That we keep bailing out, um, this sort of companies. Yeah. And my view is always that we shouldn't, uh, we should keep it competitive. But r regardless, um, again, even if they don't recover inventories, uh, they will take five years, right? And there's a good chance within five years, or let's call it six, that Pharma Niaga will, uh, you know, still be around. Yep. Right? So anyway, that's really um, what we call assessing the going concern of the company, whether they'll still be alive or not. Okay, guys, before we move on, if you're someone looking to level up their stock investing skills and you need a lot more guidance, we do have a one-on-one -on -one program called the Mentorship Program. If you're interested, you can apply it in the comment section or the description. Now, yeah. the next question obviously is like, whether is this cheap, right? So as of this recording, which is the 3rd of March, they have a market cap of 234 million. Mm. Now here comes actually, I would say the biggest risk of them all, which is actually the debt, which is huge amount. And that pushes up the true price you have to pay as a shareholder, assuming if you bought the whole company, uh, which is about enterprise value of 1.8 billion. Mm. And that's pretty big. And again, using back the earnings of 49 million and you know, the cash flow wouldn't be too dissimilar. Yep. Um, you're looking at and enterprise value wow. earnings of 37 times. Yeah, that's very so expensive. So despite the 40% drop, they are still at 37 times, which means previous before the drop, it was over 50 times earnings. Mm. Why is it over 50 times earnings? Well, it's a monopoly. Yep, okay. So, wow. Yeah, they are teasing the, inve the viewers right now, man. First, you give the cheap, that's like, hey, Actually, it looks like it's yeah. a pretty good deal. But then when you go to the valuation part, actually in reality, yeah, really I mean, that they, 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 obviously we're not going to comment too much on what's mm -hmm. happening with uh, Boosted and LTAD. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, we'll just let them do their thing. See what can they actually help to solve this problem with Farmian Yaga. I mean, this is a very, I believe it's a time sensitive issue. Yep. So they want to solve this problem as fast as they can. Yes. And yeah, who knows? Maybe you think like maybe this year they can solve yeah. it already. You never know, right? So yep. yeah. Uh, and again, this is also a it's a drug. It's a medical industry company. It's a very important needs for everyone in Malaysia. Yeah. Who's gonna buy medicine from this pharma yeah. if pharma Niaga is not there, right? But so yeah. you can see very obviously that it is not the most efficiently run uh, because mm. Yeah, that's the sad part. A monopoly requiring so much debt 
is a bit confusing to me. And I mean, if the dad wasn't there, then it's actually quite uh, yeah. interesting, right? Because uh, let me just do the quick math, right? So uh, assuming you want to assume all of the if dad there's no dad, it was it will be six six point eight times earning. So that will be attractive, mm. but because of the dad, not very attractive to me. Mm. And that is a real cost, right? It's not an imaginary number, right? Okay, I think uh, that's about it for today, right? Uh, I mean, of course, there's a takeaway. I think this right, is important, okay. right? So what this impairment tells you, or it told me at least, is that, you know, very similar to a company like Telecom Malaysia, Pharma Niaga has what we call uh, national service interests, uh, which is just a fancy way for saying that profits may not be the number one goal. Now, of course, as a shareholder, profits are extremely important, right? Yep. And so when you have a company that puts profits secondary, then, you know, you have to think a lot harder, let's put it that way. And what is the national service nature of this business? Well, think about it, right? To shareholders or in a private business, you are going to think of how best you can optimize your inventory and things like that, right? So imagine, you know, just it's very similar, you are selling chicken rice, right? And you have to think about how much chicken you need to store up how much rice you need to store up because all these got expiry dates as well, mm. right? So how do you go about doing it? Well, you know, you just look at your restaurant now, right? You got 10 tables and consistently- Eight tables is filled, let's say. Like. Eight, eight tables is filled. Oh no, let's use five, let's okay. say. So you got five tables are filled. What is the right amount of chickens in table terms you should be storing? Yeah, I mean, for safety, you put six to seven. Yeah, yeah. right. But what, um, because of COVID, what Farm Niagara has been requested to do is to not have five or six to seven worth of inventory, but like eight or nine. <laughs> okay. Why? Because for actually on the other side, which is the public side, it makes a lot of sense, right? You want to stock up. Ma, yeah. Because you don't know yeah, whether you need is, it. Yeah, correct. So now when things are recovering and things they don't need, okay, fine, we chuck it. But that's not how a business owner would think, right? Because a business owner would be like, yeah, I'm wasting a lot of money. Yeah. And if you keep doing it, if you keep buying nine tables worth of chicken when your demand is only five, you will have a problem. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is a big issue. Second thing is that um, why this risk isn't that big is because this inventory is already sunk cost. It's something they spent in the past already. Yeah. It's not going to be an issue in the future. Uh, unless you've got a lot more pandemics, right? Mm. But in the you know, it's already cost in the past. Yeah. It's so paid they are for not already, uh. Yeah, they're not losing money. Because they already paid for it, right? Mm. They are losing potential profits earnings in the future. In the future. Yeah. So got this it, is it. this is very important. This is not like a certain suburb dynamic, mm. right? Where they already book revenues and profit, but it is not going to come. Mm, right? right. Number three to remember is that it's still a dominant company. Yeah. So it it's will still be there. Um, and he has many levers to pull. Right. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I think before we go that right, uh, just to highlight the second point, um, maybe the viewers, you can, if you're interested to study more about Pharma Niaga, you can check out their segments. Uh, what is the segment breakdown for the vaccine for the other yep. business segment? Assuming all of the vaccine revenues and profits yeah. is gone, what is the remaining profit and revenue? Then from there, you can project and see whether yeah. is it that If you want to be or... more competitive, I did my average from 12, 2012 to 2021, right? So what you can consider doing is remove 2021, um, mm. because 2021 was a yes, big the, boost, yeah, right? Correct. So that will lower it a little bit more. And that will actually make the valuations maybe 40 times instead of uh, instead of 37. Right. But yeah. Okay, so the next um, one is- My yeah. view is that it's unlikely to like, you know, go bankrupt or something like that. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, as I mentioned, you know, uh, it's, it's in a strong position. Cash flow visibility is a lot higher for these sort of companies. And, you know, inventory, they might recover it. If, once they recover it, that the years required it takes to get rid of the PN17 status will drop from 5.4 years to, who knows? I mean, crazy enough, could be one year. 
Yeah. But we'll see. Uh, but the last bit is that, uh, honestly, despite all this, I just don't see how it represents something very attractive, right? 37 times earnings is lower than your FD rate. Yeah. And the growth of the company is not going to be so like fantastic that it's worth paying this price. Um, although, again, I said, the consistency of the cash will be there. Yeah. So perhaps if it drops another 80%, then maybe I'll be excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you never know. So maybe this is like another hack stack situation, right? <laughs> like the moment we see it, yes. then, it's, then it pumps. So you never know. So who knows? Maybe this Correct. is the bottom. Or maybe Correct. you can go down further. I can so. bet. In fact, I'm willing to bet a lot that the minute we post this video, <laughs> it will go up three to four times. Yeah. That's but that's just our opinion. Yeah. Not financial advice. Not financial advice. All right, guys, enjoying the video so far. If the answer is yes, remember, like, comment, subscribe. And as far as comments go, if you don't like the video, do let us know as well. We always take all sorts of feedback, as long as they're constructive. Okay, guys, before you guys go, uh, this is the Fire Pro stock performance for February 2023. So far, most of the stocks is in the green uh, and only one of the stock is down like 7%. And if you check out the below of the Fire Pro portfolio, there's a stock performance for our telegram group now this telegram stock performance is basically uh stocks that we are we didn't cover in fire pro it's more of like a conversation we had with our telegram members and we saw like some of the stock ideas is pretty attractive and maybe there's like a short term uh catalyst that we share to our members over there and this is basically the performance so far now some of the stocks mentioned in the slides is actually we some of it is already so i mean because it's like it went up quite a bit already. Uh, some of it, we're still holding it. But most of these stocks that we share to our members, uh, maybe like one or two stocks we hold. Uh, the rest is like, it's just for watch list purposes only. Lah. But if you're interested to like check out more on this uh, stock performance for FirePro and Telegram, make sure to check out FirePro. And if you're still not convinced yet, you can actually access our free version. Uh, it's called our Fire Free Sample. There you can check how we write our reports for FirePro and also the video contents inside the SIB program. The links to get access this free sample is in the description and comments. Uh, now, uh, I think that's about it for today's video. Uh, thank you guys for watching towards the end. Hope you guys learned something about Pharma Niaga situation right now and definitely uh, benefit you if you are looking to invest or whether you are not an investor. Yeah, hopefully you will learn some knowledge on today's video and don't forget to follow us on our social medias telegram instagram facebook all of those good stuff the links are in the description below and we'll see you in the next video bye bye